Assignment 5, question 4. An RL circuit. This circuit has a switch uh, that can connect to one of two points, A or B. The switch has been connected to point A for a very long time. And at t equals 0, it swings down and connects this point to B instead. The question is, what is the current IT through this 2 millihenries inductor for t after 0? Uh, let's see. We begin by taking a snapshot of the circuit at t equal 0 minus. That is, right before we move the switch. The circuit's been like that for a very long time. That means that it's in DC steady state and the inductor can be represented as a wire. That is nice. This inductor here would be joining these two nodes. This node up here and the big node down there. So this is the inductor. I don't need to draw that diagonally like that. No, no. So this is the inductor, right? Agreed. And this is the current in the inductor at t equals 0 minus. But we know that the current in the inductor is not going to change instantaneously. So that current in the inductor is going to be the same at 0 plus. It's going to be just I L naught, the initial current in the inductor. Now let's see what's that current in this snapshot. Hmm. Well, uh, this wire alias the inductor is actually bypassing this resistor and bypassing all the resistors on the right. The current is going to be zero in here and zero on all the resistors there because of the bypass. To see that more clearly, let's say, uh, how do I explain that in a better way? Well, imagine this is your reference node. Mm -hmm. Because of this wire here, your reference node spills up all the way here and this is just part of your reference node as well. That means that the current in this resistor here would be on our branch. V reference minus V reference divided by 1 kilo. This is of course 0 amps. And the same can be said about the resistors on the right. You can substitute them. So let's say 1 and 1 is 2 in parallel with 2 is 1 in series with 2 is 3 kilo ohms. So you have a 1 kilo ohm resistor on the right hand side of the inductor and the current in that is also 0 amps for the same reason. So that is that your circuit actually it looks as if this wasn't there and as if all of that was not there either. It's very easy to tell me what is the current in that inductor at t equals 0 minus. Of course, that current is just 7 milliamps. 7 milliamps. And we have the first piece of data to solve the exercise. Now we represent the circuit for t after 0. After the switch operates, the switch is not connected to A anymore. It's connected to B, like so. We are still interested on what is happening on the right-hand side where the inductor is. Let's see what's happened to the left-hand side of the circuit. Hmm, what is the current in this wire? Well, let's see if we draw a Gauss surface surrounding this part of the circuit, we know that the current that goes into that Gauss surface has to be equal to the current that comes out. There is only one possibility for the current in this wire. It has to be zero amps. There is only one path of current entering or leaving that Gauss surface. Because the current here is zero, actually this circuit on the left has no further impact on what is happening on the circuit on the right, and I can erase it like so. But still, where is our inductor? Well, the inductor is connected between this node and this node, and here it's connected between this and that. But we are interested in finding what is the Thevenin equivalent seen by that inductor between this point and that point. Well, it's connected here, right? Oh, it's connected between this point 
at that point. That is where the inductor will be connected, but I'm not drawing that yet because I want to see what is the Thevenin equivalent seen by that inductor. You can find the Thevenin equivalent by the one amp to amp method, but that is kind of like overkill. In this case, I use the kill the sources method. I find what is the open circuit voltage here, and that open circuit uh, voltage is going to be V7. And of course, there are no sources in this circuit, and that is zero volts. V7 and is zero volts. And what is our thevenin? To find our thevenin, I just determine what is the equivalent resistance that I see looking into the circuit from the point of view of where the inductor will be. And that is one in series with one is two in parallel with two is a one in series with two is three, three in parallel with one kilo. So R thevenin is going to be one kilo in parallel with three kilo ohms. That is one times three divided by four, three fourths of a kilo ohm. That is seven hundred and fifty ohms. And V naught V thevenin is zero volts as we saw before. We have all the data we need. Now that we know that, we connect the inductor again. Remember, this is the circuit for T after zero. We'll replace this circuit by its seven, and which is only one resistor of 750 ohms, and reconnect the inductor. Let's draw that. So this is the seven and equivalent of that circuit, 750 ohms, and we reconnect the inductor right here between those two points which are these two two millihenries connected to 750 what is the final current in here well and that's very easy this final current in the inductor is going to be zero amps of course there is no no source in here so let's write it the final current in the inductor is zero amps we knew that the initial current of the inductor was 7 milliamps. We computed that before. And from this circuit, we realized that the time constant of discharge of this inductor in this Thevenin uh, circuit has to be L over R Thevenin for this circuit is 2 millihenries divided by 750 ohms that is the time constant so we say the current in the inductor as a function of time is going from seven milliamps down to zero with a certain time constant and that is this one it's 2.6 periodic seconds and we can write now that current in the inductor as a function of time for t after zero. Zero is the final value. The exponential has a magnitude of 7 milliamps e to the negative. Of course, I can write t over 2.66666, but let me find the inverse of that, which is 3,075, sorry, 375,000 t. And these are milliamps, and this is the solution to this exercise. That is the current in that inductor as a function of time for t after zero. It starts at seven milliamps and it decays with a time constant of 2.666 seconds. Five times tau later, that current in the inductor will be zero for all practical purposes. And that's all. Wait, 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 wait. What happens if what I want is not the current in the inductor, but the current or the voltage somewhere else? Well, what do we do in those cases? Now that I have the current in the inductor, if this one as a function of time, if I want to find anything else, let's say for the sake of the argument, I want to find what is um, this current here, in this resistor, or in this branch. What I do is I imagine that my inductor, now that I know its current, is in reality a current source with that value. Like so. I repeat, this is a trick I use. It's not that the inductor is a current source, but I imagine now that I know the current there, from there I want to compute this current over here. So I solve this circuit using M and A, 
with a little trick. I said, this is my reference node. This is uh, node uh, 1 over here. And this is node 2. I solve the circuit. Well, you know how to solve that circuit. It's pretty straightforward. Let me say, branch currents are going to be this one, that one, this one, this other, and that one over there. And I write KCL1. And which is zero amps going in equals to V1 over this. Um, this was one kilo. So V1 over one kilo mm, plus the current IL, which is known, it is this one, plus the current V1 minus V2 over two kilos. And the KCL for the second node is going to be this current v1 minus v2 over two kilos this current over here is equal to the current on this vertical branch v2 over 2000 ohms two kilos plus the current here which is v2 divided by 2000 ohms as well a thousand plus a thousand we have two equations and two unknowns and you say wait a minute what about IL? IL is not an unknown. Hmm, how does it work? Let me show you. So we enter those two equations in our calculator, V1, V2, and IL, but IL as a symbol. And then I say, I want to make that into an array. You know that, because it's a system of equations, and the unknowns I want to solve for are only V1 and V2. Only, only those two make me an array and then symbolic solver, and I want to solve for them. And you get that V1 and V2 are given in terms of IL, and IL is this expression that we have here. In particular, we want to find what is the current in this branch here, and that current we know is V2 divided by 2000. So we say, oh, V2 is 250 times IL divided by 2,000. That is 250 times 7 times the exponential divided by 2,000. And that is the current we're looking for. Let me write it down here. So we say, this current, I'm going to give it a name, I0, I0, would be 250, 250 times uh, this is uh, 7 times 7 divided by 2000 yeah, times the exponential minus 375,000 T and these are amps of course and that is our solution if we were looking for that if we were looking for this one of course would be V1 minus V2 and in that case we have V1 is 750 IL and V2 is 250 IL A hey, oops there is a negative sign here so no problem so let's add that negative sign here in front of this expression that makes sense because this current is flowing like this so this current is going to be negative with this one and that's right so there's a negative sign here in front hey it doesn't want to stay put negative sign and that is our current i not flowing to the right in this resistor as a function of time for t after zero great now just time to go thank you thank you very much